On January 8th, we commemorate the afterfeast of the Theophany of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Venerable George, the Chosen by its Abbot, Venerable Dominica of Constantinople, Saint Emilian the Confessor, Bishop of Sisyphus, Venerable Gregory, Wonderworker of the Kiev Near Caves, Venerable Gregory the Recluse of the Kiev Caves, Herod Martyr Isidore and 72 others at Uriev, Estonia, St. Paisius of Udich, St. Carterius of Caesarea in Cappadocia, Martyrs Theophilus the Deacon and Heladius in Libya, Martyrs Julian and his wife, Basilisa, and those with them in Egypt, Venerable Elias the Hermit of Egypt, Martyr Abo the Perfumer of Tbilisi, Georgia, Venerable Gregory of Ohrid. The second day of the afterfeast of Theophany falls on January 8th. At Vespers, we repeat a hymn which has already been sung at Compline for Theophany. In the hymn, St. John wonders in whose name he should baptize Christ. Should he baptize him in the name of the Father? The Lord Jesus Christ already bears him in himself. Of the Son? He himself is incarnate, Son of God. Of the Holy Spirit? Christ himself sends the Holy Spirit. St. George the Chosebite was born on the island of Cyprus toward the end of the 6th century. After the death of his parents, he went to Palestine to worship at the holy places. Here, he entered into the monastic community of Chosebite between the River Jordan and Jerusalem, and he later became head of this monastery. St. George presented the monks example in fasting, vigil, and physical efforts. Having lived as an angel upon the earth, he died in peace. St. Dominica came from Carthage to Constantinople in the time of the Holy Emperor Theodosius the Great. Here she was baptized by Patriarch Nectarius and entered a woman's monastery. Through strict and prolonged ascetic effort, she attained to high spiritual perfection. The saint healed the sick, demonstrated power over the natural elements, and predicted the future. By her miracles, the saint moved inhabitants of the capital towards concerns about life eternal and the soul. Adorned by virtues, the saint departed this life a spotless virgin in her old age. Saint Emilian was a zealous defender of the holy icons during the reign of Emperor Leo the Armenian. He suffered torture and martyrdom in the year 820. His main feast is August 8th. Saint Gregory was tonsured at the Kiev Caves Monastery in the time of Saint Theodosius, commemorated on May 3rd. The saint devoted much time to reading books, which were his sole possession. He had the ability to bring thieves to their senses. Several times robbers broke in on him in his cell or in the garden. But the saint reasoned with them. The thieves repented and began to lead honest lives. Once when the monk went to Dniepe River for water, some servants of Prince Rostislav caught sight of the elder and rudely began making fun of him. The saint answered them, Children, When you should be asking for everyone's prayers, you are displeasing to God. Weep, for disaster approaches. Repent, and ask God to be merciful to you on the day of judgment. All you will find death in the water with your prince. By orders of the enraged prince Rostislav, the monk was bound hand and foot, and he was drowned in the Dniepe with a stone around his neck. Still his prediction came true. Rostislav did not return from the campaign. In that same year of 1093, the 20 year old prince drowned in sight of his brother, Vladimir Monomak, trying to save himself as he fled from the Polovetsians. Several sources identify St. Gregory with St. Gregory, a composer of canons. In honor of the holy prince Vladimir, St. Theodosius, and the holy martyrs Boris and Gleb, But St. Gregory, compiler of canons, lived later and died in about the year 1120. St. Gregory the Wonderworker died in 1093 and was buried in the near caves. His memory is celebrated also on September 28th and on the second Sunday of Great Lent. St. Gregory, hermit of the caves, lived during the 14th century. In the lives of the saints whose relics lie in the cave of St. Theodosius, it says... 
that uncoat grass served as St. Gregory's food all his life. He gave this grass to those coming to him, and the sick were healed. He is also commemorated on August 28th and on the second Sunday of Great Lent. St. Isidore was priest of St. Nicholas Church in the city of Yuriev in Derpto, which is at present Taru in Estonia. According to the terms of a treaty concluded in 1463 between the Moscow Great Prince Ivan III and the Livonian Knights, the latter were obligated to extend every protection to the Orthodox at Delta. But the Livonian Knights, who were German Catholics, broke the treaty and tried to force the Orthodox to become Roman Catholics. The priest Isidore bravely stood forth in defense of Orthodoxy, preferring to accept the martyr's crown rather than submit to the Catholics. The Latin bishop of the Roman Catholic nobles of Uriev had been told that St. Isidore and the Orthodox population of the city had spoken against the faith and customs of the Germans. When St. Isidore and 72 of his parishioners went to bless the waters of the river Omovza, or Emaiga, now Emajogi, for the Feast of Theophany, they were arrested and brought before the Latin bishop Andrew and the civil judges of the city. Pressure was brought on them to convert to Catholicism, but the saint and his flock refused to renounce Christ or the Orthodox faith. Enraged by this, the authorities had them thrown into prison. St. Isidore encouraged his flock to prepare themselves for death and not to fear torture. He partook of the reserved gifts he carried with him, then communed all the men, women, and children with the holy and life-giving mysteries of Christ. Then the bishop and the judges summoned the Orthodox to appear before them once more, demanding that they convert to Catholicism. When they refused to do so, they were dragged back to the river and pushed through the hole in the ice that they had cut to bless the water. So they all suffered and died for Christ, who bestowed on them crowns of unfading glory. During the spring floods, the incorrupt bodies of the holy martyrs, including the fully vested body of the higher martyr Isidore, were found by Russian merchants journeying along the river bank. They buried the saints around the church of St. Nicholas. Although people began to venerate these saints shortly after their death, they were not officially glorified by the church until 1897. St. Paisius of Uglich was Ugumen of the Protection Monastery near Uglich. He was born in the Tver district near the city of Kashin, and he was a nephew of St. Macarius of Kaliazin, commemorated on March 17th. St. Paisius entered his uncle's monastery after the death of his parents, when he was just an 11-year-old child. Under his uncle's guidance, St. Paisius led a monastic life of obedience, fasting, and prayer, and he was put to work copying soul-saving books. A man wondrous of spirit, famed teacher of holiness, and most astounding wonder-worker, he founded in 1464 the Cenobitic Protection Monastery, three versts from Uglich, at the wish of Prince Andrew, and he was chosen Igumen. St. Paisius was also founder and organizer of the Holy Nikolsky Greco Zaruchnya Monastery in 1489. Struggling at the Protection Monastery, St. Paisius lived into old age and died on June 6, 1504. His relics, glorified by miracles, rest beneath a crypt in the Protection Monastery. St. Carterius lived during the reign of Diocletian and was a teacher in Caesarea of Cappadocia. He stood before a statue of Serapis and prayed to Christ, and the idol shattered to pieces. The procurator Urbanus ordered St. Carterius to be tortured and then beheaded. Some, however, say he was killed with a spear. St. Theophilus, the deacon, suffered with St. Heladius. After confessing Christ before the governor of Libya, they were tortured and slain. The holy martyr Julian was born in the Egyptian city of Antino, and to satisfy his parents, he entered into marriage with a noble and rich maiden, Basilisa. Though married, the spouses remained virginal. Upon the death of their parents, they built two monasteries, one for men and one for women. They themselves became monastics and headed these monasteries. In the year 313, during the reign of Diocletian, St. Julian suffered cruelly for his faith in Christ. By his bravery, he converted Celsius, the son of his torturer, the hegemon Marcion, and his wife, Marionilla. Having resurrected a dead pagan, the saint also converted him. The converts received baptism from the priest Anthony, 
In baptism, the pagan was named Anastasius, meaning resurrected. After being locked in prison, they all received the crown of martyrdom, one through beheading by the sword. Also with them were twenty soldiers and seven youths. St. Eliash, the Egyptian, became a monk and pursued asceticism for 75 years on a desolate mountain in a cave. He died in the 4th century at the age of 110. In the 8th century, a Saracen army tyrannized Kartli as a first step towards overturning the Georgian nation. The invaders were certain that the best way to conquer Georgia was to uproot the Christian faith. The Georgian people were alarmed and the clergy and the best sons of Kartli sought desperately for a resolution to this calamity. Much blood was shed in 766 when the Muslim invaders crushed an uprising in the eastern region of Kakheti. In 772, Caliph al-Mansur, three years prior to the end of his reign, was dissatisfied with the provincial governor of Kartli, Duke Nurse, and he summoned him to Baghdad. Nurse spent the following three years in captivity, during that time, he became acquainted with a 17-year-old perfumer named Abo, and when he was released, he brought Abo back with him to Georgia. Abo was amazed at the great piety of the Georgian people, and he began to learn the Georgian language, attend the divine services, and speak with local priests. Abo sought with all his heart to become a Christian, and he was eventually baptized in Kazaria, while in the company of Duke Nurse. Later, Abo accompanied the Duke of Abkhazeti to escape the Sarsian raids, discovering an entire population of Christians praising Jesus Christ with one heart and mouth. Abu gave great thanks to God for the opportunity to visit this area. Nurse later returned to Kartli, but Abu remained at the request of the Abkhaz king, who feared that the Sarsians would torture Abu for his devout faith in Christ. Soon, however, Abu became restless and told the king, Let me go and I will freely declare my Christian faith to those who hate Christ. Abba labored in Tbilisi for three years, preaching the Christian faith. Then his own former countrymen betrayed and captured him, but he was released soon after at the request of the Duke Stepanos. A new emir was appointed to rule in Tbilisi, and when the Christians heard that he was plotting to capture Abba, they begged him to conceal his identity. But Abba simply rejoiced and told them, I am prepared not only to be tortured for Christ, but to die for his sake as well. As predicted, the Amir's servants captured Abu and brought him before a judge. The judge tried in vain to entice Abu to return to the faith of his ancestors. Then, in a rage, he ordered that Abu be cast into prison and that his hands and feet be fettered in chains. His suffering for Christ filled the blessed Abu with even greater love, and he asked his Christian brothers and sisters to sell his clothes and used the money earned to buy candles and incense for local churches. On the day of his execution, Abba washed his face, anointed it with holy oil, partook of the holy gifts, and prepared for his death as though preparing for a feast. Weep not, but rejoice, for I am going to my Lord. Pray for me, and may the peace of God protect you, he cheerfully told the faithful Christians who surrounded him in his last hours. When his time had come, St. Abu placed his arms on his breast in the form of a cross and joyously bowed his head beneath the sword. The executioners swung their swords three times in hopes of frightening Abu into denying Christ. But the blessed Abu stood unyielding until his last breath. Finally, convinced that all their efforts and cunning were in vain, the executioners were given a sign and they beheaded the holy Abu. Defeated and ashamed, Abu's godless executioners tossed his body, his garments, and the earth that had been soaked with his blood into a sack, dragged it outside the city, and burned it near the Mathvari River. Then they wrapped his ashes in sheepskin and cast them into the river. In the evening, a sign was given from above. Next to the Meteki cliff by the bridge, a shining star hung over the river with its bright light reflecting in the water where the remains of the saint rested. Later, a chapel was built in honor of St. Abu on the left bank of the Mithkafari. St. Gregory was a faithful teacher and shepherd of Christ's flock. An inscription in the Church of Holy Wisdom, Hagia Sophia, 
in Orchard refers to him as Gregory the Wise. <laughs>